Hello, this is Josh Patel, and today I'm bringing you the last video of Chapter 1 in Church of Biology. Today we will be doing 1.3, which is all about scientific thinking and processes. So let's get started so we can finish up this chapter. Our key concept for today is science is a way of thinking, questioning, and gathering information. This is another video, basically, which is an overview of science, like the last two. Like all science, biology is a process of inquiry. Inquiry is basically just asking questions to learn more. Scientists make careful and systematic observations. They record observations as data. They form a hypothesis as a possible answer to a question and they test their hypothesis and analyze their data. So this is basically just the scientific process, which is first observing, then in between these two would be asking a question, which leads back to inquiry. And then we form a hypothesis, which is a scientific guess to the answer of a problem. Then we test our hypothesis using an experiment we analyze our data using graphs, tables, charts, we draw a conclusion, and then, which is evaluating results, and then we share it to the public so other people can replicate our experiments and make sure we all get the same data. Biologists use experiments to test hypotheses. Observational studies allow science to describe a phenomenon. So another way to learn about our world is through observations. Experiments allow scientists to determine what causes a phenomenon. So if we want to figure out what causes certain things, we would make experiments as this guy is doing, which he has a pretty funky experiment which involves some type of juice and some type of gases to form in his nose. So, experimental studies allow scientists to determine what causes phenomenon, but there are two variables we need to really understand in the parts of an experiment. So the first is an independent variable, and these are what you manipulate. Next we have the dependent variable, which is what is measured. Another name for the independent variable is the test variable, and another name for the dependent variable is the outcome variable. Independent and dependent variable are kind of hard to remember, so a good way to remember these are the independent variable is independent and it affects the dependent variable. So the dependent variable is dependent on what the independent variable is. So let's do an example. Let's use an experiment using plants. So Let's say we're trying to figure out what type of fertilizer affects how high our plant grows. So the independent variable is what's manipulated, so that's the type of fertilizer. It can be changed as much as it wants because it's independent. But the dependent variable is what the independent variable is causing. So it's causing the plants to grow different heights, which would be the dependent variable or the outcome. So we need to really understand this topic. And then constants are conditions that are kept the same. So constants would be like, in our experiment, the type of plant, the type of soil, the pot the plants sit in, anything that stays the same, like the amount of water, the type of water. And another variable we need to remember is the, well it's not a variable, but it's called the control group. And it's basically what the thing that doesn't receive the independent variable. So in our experiment, it would be a plant without any fertilizer. It's like a standard that we can compare our results to. A theory explains a wide range of observations. So now we're getting into theories and laws. Theories explain a wide range of observations and experimental results. A theory is supported by a wide range of scientific evidence and theories can change based on new evidence. So basically it's saying theories describe a given phenomenon and it's backed up by a lot of scientific research and evidence and it can also be changed depending on new evidence that contradicts old things. So if we get new technology 
or better scientists and we find something that denies our old theory, it can be changed. So they're not set in stone. But you need to remember that theories describe a phenomenon. On the other hand, we have laws. Laws predict the outcome of certain events. So they're usually math calculations and high tech things like that. Because math calculations will always be right and they always predict. Laws predict, theories explain. And another thing to note is theories cannot change into laws. It's a big mishap that everybody thinks. Everybody thinks theories eventually become laws if they are backed up by enough evidence, but they're two separate things. Theories explain and laws predict. So that's the end of chapter one, lesson three, scientific thinking and processes. This is also the last video in chapter one, so you guys should be proud of yourself for finishing this chapter. And hope you enjoy this video and learned a lot. If you miss anything, make sure you go back and review it in your book or in this video. And our next video will be on Chapter 2, Chemistry of Life, Lesson 1, Atoms, Ions, and Molecules. So stay tuned and good luck in your quest in biology.